Honest, J. Nowak. Oh yeah. A pleasure to meet y'all at last, and welcome back to Flying with the Foam on HJN. So, of course I'm going to be doing the best that I can to get through all of this, and I will tell you right now that there certainly is a lot of uncharted territory, much of which hasn't necessarily been explored at all. Even when it comes to Nerf Secrets Revealed After Saw, for example, it pretty much just leads me to find out that there really is a lot worth talking about. And that's pretty much the reason why I got Flying With The Foam here, to pretty much introduce some new pieces of my collection as a whole. Or at least pieces that are much newer than what I've pretty much already obtained. But right now, I'm pretty much just gonna go and get on with some more material here. So here comes number 657. And, well, here comes the blaster that I picked for this little part right here. Rival Pyroclays. Yep, this is my pick right here. Now, for a Rival's Blaster, I will say that there really is a lot of possibilities that you could probably put together on a blaster like this because, because of how big the Rival's Blaster system has been, I mean... By today's standards, it's gigantic. It's probably one of the biggest that Hasbro themselves has pretty much made since the old school End Strike series had basically started as early as 2003 and then ended by the end of 2012. I mean, that's almost a full decade. But here, with the Rivals lineup itself, it hasn't even been close to a decade. About six years now, it's been since they were first introduced with the usage of the Apollo and the Zeus, along with the face mask and ammo refill kits and otherwise, but by today's standards, it's clear that this series has gotten so big that it's almost immeasurable. I guess that's kind of what the beauty is when it comes to Nerf's gigantic profit margin, thanks to a combination of thousands of different advertisements that they pretty much just leech out into the world every year, and then there's also the usage of a lot of product detail, quality, build, construction, ergonomics, performance, color. There's so many other categories that seem to fit together that it's gigantic at this point. The whole situation about Hasbro's really, really big expansion by this point has really been quite a big story to tell. But the rival Heracles here kind of just leeches off some of its fellow brethren. And that almost leads the profit margin as a whole kind of disarrayed. Because I've talked about how this blaster already bears a lot of similar resemblance to that of various other rival blasters out there. The Deimos was like that, or Finisher if you want to call it that. And then there was the Kronos. Yeah. It seemed that Nerf was trying to do a lot with their blasters, but they only got so far. And that's an interesting fact because of the fact that Hasbro themselves has a bit of trouble figuring out what kind of patents that they can basically hold without probably getting themselves into legal troubles here and there. And there's only so many of them to go out around for everybody. So with the competitors that seem to hold a lot of patents of their own, it kind of makes you wonder, why couldn't Nerf just ask them if it was okay to kind of copy some of their aspects? I mean, that is sort of a contradiction itself, because Nerf has actually ripped off a lot of plaster products here and there, or some competitors have actually ripped them off, and it's pretty much just an ongoing legal war that continues to the present day, probably even beyond that. We can only look to the future and find out what could probably happen then, but just to avoid getting sidetracked here, I'm just going to say that now the blaster is armed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Thank goodness that thing is still intact. 
Okay, well, if you just noticed, I fired a shot at the window and it bounced back so hard that it hit this dream catcher that was right above my head. Right above me, man. Just look up there. Like, like you see that, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. That is crazy, but man, I was kind of lucky I dodged that. And the run is pretty much right behind me somewhere, but... Again, let's not get sidetracked here, or even just off track in general. This blaster is really powerful for what it is. It may be a clone of the Kronos, but... Whoa! Really bad bounce backs here. Uh, I'm going to aim a little higher. Oh! <laughs> Ricochets. I tell you, it's just really darn fun getting to know how hard these blasters can hit the window and then bounce back off the walls all around this entire living room. It's crazy. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, I might as well just go out and say that while this blaster certainly does have a lot of things to pretty much tell us about, it's got a nice big story behind it and I could tell that there really are a lot of secrets just waiting to be revealed. And, well, there you go. The premise of Nerf Secret Revealed as a whole. But, yeah, this blaster basically holds the same amount of rounds as the Kronos. Five rounds in total. But to make up for that, it's got a nice sort of build quality to that with this sort of handguard thing that goes around it and this giant bulky piece at the bottom, which is able to hold ten extra rounds, and not to mention attack rail on top of the handle here to prime the blaster but this alone is a pretty interesting connection because the end strike maverick had this exact sort of trope right here where it has a tactical rail on top of the priming handle that primes the blaster and at the same time it can pretty much sport whatever sort of accessory that you like to put on there and there may not be very many accessories for the rivals lineup but it sure is interesting to note that they pretty much put this here to remind us that the Maverick is still one of the best blasters that you can get if you wanted to go that far into the past. But me personally, I almost like to stay within the present. This is not very much in the present though. This came out just a couple of years ago, pretty much. But the way I see it, wow. I mean, that is just fun. Oh, I hit it again. Oh! Oh! Eh, and I do have a few rounds left, but I'm going to try and stop shooting right now because it's getting a little too crazy. So, I typically do have blasters set on this safety mode right here just to prevent accidental trigger pulling and a a round might end up hitting something around here. There are some expensive items around here, very delicate ones as well, so I'm just gonna draw the line right here. And now I'm gonna say that, well, the Heracles, it might as well be considered a clone because some of its fellow brethren, in a way, does feature some of the same exact sort of functionality within it and also some of the same other attributes located within its exterior, but the Heracles sure is quite a lot of fun. It shoots really hard for what it is, and I tell you, dry firing is pretty much on par with various other rivals' blasters in the lineup itself. They're pretty loud, pretty hard, and they're for a true testament to how powerful they really are. So, that's pretty much going to cut it for right now, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be having a lot of other th things around here to talk about, but until then, if you want to see more, go down to my channel. Make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side.